A lot of times where people pay for X amount of bill and I want this, this, and this. All right, here you go. Five months later, here's your big bill. Pay it. Go blow the car up. Go to another shop. And they're like, this is a factory block. They didn't put shit in here. They just took your money. Like, I've seen that many times, too. <laughs> oh, he's got a beautiful shift boot. Oh, he's got the full set, dude. He's got the black guys, the Dragon Ball, and the Crown Royal bag. <laughs> That's the trifecta. Shell has around 150K rebuilt tittle. It's on jacks, but <laughs> always, dude, with the tittle. The AutoZone pitcher. This is where I always go. <laughs> this is my second home. I decided I was going to take the build to the next level by deleting AC and ABS. <laughs> next level, delete the AC. In Arizona, we delete the AC. I remember back when 240s were dirt cheap. I had an S13 I bought for $300 running and driving. Man, you could have been Mr. Nissan. What happened? Yeah. I got that 240 in trade for a Zex nitrous kit, a nitrous bottle, <laughs> and... $200 or something stupid. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> That's like that dude who bought a pizza with Bitcoin. <laughs> sir, it was two pizzas. Sir, two oh, pizzas. Have oh, you yeah. seen that interview with the guy? He's about crazy. He's yes, nearly crying. The fact that he doesn't even have the mount for the uh, access port, he just has it like just looped up there on yeah. the between the jam yeah, between the cluster and the uh Yeah, that's everything you, everything you need to know. You're going to have a right. bad time. Also, out of gas. Look at the gas gauge. That's what I was going to say. Look at the <laughs> gas gauge. Cruise in the left lane, not passing nobody. Taking a picture with my cell phone. Not one, but two. <laughs> <laughs> the access port sideways. Yeah. I'm a crack with you. Even less gas here. So what'd you end up doing with the 240? I stripped it because I was going to make it a drift car because... God damn it, dude. <laughs> Let's look at some shit boxes for sale. Yeah, we, yeah. Get some we can look at some shit boxes. I got a bunch of 02 to 07 WRXs pulled up here. Cool. All right. So there should Let's be something interesting here. First up, we have, it's labeled as a sport wagon. Um, <laughs> sport uh, wagon. Uh, doesn't look like wagon to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's right. 5,500 bucks, five weeks ago, Denver, Colorado, 211,000 miles. Posting up my 2002 Subaru WRX for sale. Car runs great and doesn't have any issues. No leaks, no funny noises, no scary check engine codes, all around a very solid car. It Holy is mainly stuck aside from a couple small upgrades. It has a three inch turbo back exhaust, a larger intercooler, a stage two clutch, and I'm firm at my price of 5,500 bucks that doesn't mean i'll take 4k <laughs> the car is a clean title in hand and doesn't need anything to drive daily trades are welcome blah 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 looks like um conig wheels i think no motegi oh yikes motegi mr mr5 i think is what they're called that's the discount tire special right there yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh he's got a beautiful shift boot oh he's got the the full set dude he's got the black ice the dragon ball and a crown royal bag <laughs> That's the That's trifecta. What I I saw. <laughs> it does look pretty clean as yeah, far it as does, like it the doesn't look, it's not been wrecked up. Yeah. I mean that stuff is rinky dink. You can fix that. But for Colorado Rust bucket. It's it's not it's not a bad price. Let's find the let's problem. Let's see them. Let's see them rear quarters. Where's the bubbles <laughs> in the paint? Right there at the back bumper. Oh, it's it's, it's flat, it, but that back yeah, bumper looks flat. like it's been painted. Yeah, this looks respray. Yeah, to me. and look look at the freaking keyhole in the trunk. Oh, it's blue. It's blue. Yep. Yep. Respray. And it's been debadged. And check out the third brake light falling out there. <laughs> yeah. Got a weeb. Bunch of red bullshit in here. That's cool. He spray painted the factory power steering pulley red. Yeah, it looks like he's spray painted the whole power steering. <laughs> Pump, oh, pump oh, red. Yeah, yeah and like yeah, this, the coolant this, reservoir this up right there here. in the corner and the recirculation valve. The oil fill nick is red. <laughs> It's a hell of a color scheme oh. we've gone with here. Oh my god. <laughs> but he says it runs great and only has minor upgrades. 211,000 miles. Would you trust this car at all? I No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Not for 5,500. 2004 Subaru Impreza WRX, 4,000 bucks, eight hours ago in Denver, Colorado, 150,000 miles. Gave up on it and <laughs> selling to fund my LS swap going on. It's a rolling shell. I have two engines, one good, one bad, <laughs> and two transmissions, one good, one bad. Everything put back together. Shell has around 150k rebuilt tittle. It's on <laughs> jacks but <laughs> always dude with the tittle yeah it's on jacks but i can make it roll i have oem wheels for it sorry i will not part out i can provide a tow truck as well for deliveries so we got a 04 shell i think there's your problem right there yeah i'm a bet the both of those now. engines and transmissions are bad yeah everything is bad <laughs> yeah one's good one's bad i didn't make a car that's how, that's how you have to go into these deals thinking you know because these people the seller doesn't the seller doesn't care about your best interest, you know? Right. The seller right. wants to make money. Of course, STI wing. Check out this yeah. reflection right here. It's just all legs. <laughs> he's a pro, man. I mean, he's got a, a turkey pan right here for his parts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the what's steering the wheel right about? there. Steering <laughs> yeah, wheel right there on the strut bay. tower. <laughs> yeah. Guys, that's where that only goes. Been, it's only been sitting for seven years. <laughs> Gave up on it. Soon. Oh, my God. The mold in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. little mold spores. Slight Gross, water man. damage. 
Oh, the engine's the stored wood. nicely right here in this pile of bicycles. <laughs> the I mean, kitty bikes in the plywood. The, pli- the, the plywood's belt. covering the intake, you know. Yeah, it's keeping it clean. And look, it's even on time still. Like, he didn't even turn it. You think that's the good one or the bad one? That's got to be the quote-unquote good. Yeah, it's got the blue timing belt, not the black one that's hanging on the wall yeah, behind it with the weld got, helmet. He's got the racing gates. There's the TGVs on the floor right there next to the broom. This, <laughs> that's a really nice There's picture the there with a flower pot sitting on top of it. Um, <laughs> the blurry action shot. Oh, yeah. the PCM's out on the floor. Oh, the turbo under the engine on the floor. It's the Bigfoot shot. There's so much here. Oh, yeah. yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah, yeah, the Bigfoot shot. Oh. The Zapruder film. Oh, I got a sub. The sub. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like when I first saw it and I was like, okay, 150,000 miles, 4,000. I was like, oh, this is better than the other one. Yeah. No, this thing is a fucking. Uh, is, it's exponentially well, worse than the other one. <laughs> Here is a $4,000, 150,000 piece jigsaw puzzle with no instructions. Have fun. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, you bought a short block. Right, but still. You could feasibly have a have it for, <laughs> Is that yeah, the main yeah, harness here on the, the ground? Can you yes. out into the dirt? <laughs> like, <laughs> looks like I pulling hoses it. in a main I wouldn't harness. Buy it. Okay, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna start running numbers here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got double Subaru action. We're filming from inside a Subaru, filming a Subaru. Subarus attract each other. You know, that's just how, <laughs> that's just the law of the land. Subiception. Oh, this one actually is a sport wagon. Okay, 05 Subaru Impreza Deborah right. Sport Wagon, 7,300 bucks, seven hours ago in Fitchburg, Massachusetts, 200,000 miles, great condition, runs and drives like new, new tires, ready to go. That's all the information you're going to get. It's a lot of miles. The AutoZone picture. Yeah. This yeah. is where I always go. <laughs> <laughs> this is my second home. Ain't no be my damn here. Oh, God. Looks like he's got an STI head scoop. Yeah. In his defense, it looks in good condition. Even under the hood, it looks clean. But yeah. that's a lot of miles. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's factory air box. It's factory intercooler. You've got some, like, a Mishimoto radiator and some silicone hoses, but they're common to crack their uh, plastic top tank anyway, so... My, my bug eye cracked the, the plastic on the top, on the radiator. Yep. I had a blah by sedan and a blah by, uh bug eye wagon. Both of them had to put a radiator in. But yeah, I mean, what was that? A K&N drop-in uh, sticker warning octagon back yeah, down right, the strut right tower? Here. Oh, yep, yeah. Yep, yeah. Yep. So other than that, <laughs> it doesn't really. it, I mean just the only thing is is the mileage it's 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 kind of high mileage right no, it looks really I clean. mean it's even it's even clean under the hood like you can still see look at the firewall look at the strut towers it's not yeah. like a bunch of oil and crap and corrode you know all right. in there the fuse box cover the battery you don't have a lot of missing hoses or stuff with screws capped in them and you know all the hoses are where they should be everything's routed properly looks like a clean unmolested car yeah it's still a little hot seventy three hundred dollars though give all new sticker designs and our classics are available at collectorcarfeed.com slash store. Give me your money. I'm trying to talk some shit. Discord.gg slash feed. Let's talk some shit, bitch. All right, let's look at, let's look at this wagon. All right, here's a video. Oh, yeah. Vacuum leak. 2002 Subaru WRX STI, 14.5, seven hours ago in Campbell, California with 180,000 miles. Hello, Facebook, selling my fully built 2002 WRX STI wagon. Car is tuned by Travis at Snail Performance with a conservative tune at 330 wheel horsepower on E85, but the block is rated for 500. Info. 2003 STI transmission swap, full diff, Rimbos, axles, etc. Built block, less than 15,000 miles, manly pistons, eagle rods, ACL race bearings, fresh oil pump, fresh gates, race timing belt kit with less than 15,000 miles, killer B oil pan and baffle kit. Uh, do you say ACT or ACT? Oh, uh, ACT. ACT. All right, ACT heavy duty clutch, ACT lightweight flywheel, BC 272 cams, BC intake and exhaust valves, BC springs and retainers, Mishimoto radiator, VF30 turbo, Grim Speed turbo bracket, Cobb flex fuel kit. It goes on forever. Car comes with a huge amount of spare and extra parts. Looking for 14.5 OBO. I know I'm forgetting things. If you are interested, message me. So it's tuned by Travis at the top, and then at the bottom is tuned by Carberry. Carberry? Oh, tuned on Carberry. Oh, tuned on Carberry. Yeah. So it okay. has a two-step cringe. The wheels, I love them. I love those fucking Enkies. The NTO 3 is, I think they are. Yeah, it looks really good. But it, 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 it all looks good, man. But it's oh, just, it's too much shit to me. It's too much. It's a whole lot of shit you didn't do. It's a lot of custom. Right. You know, so it's like, 
when when you this when something goes wrong, you have to figure hole. it out. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, buy this build that I sunk so much money and time into, and you'll never figure out what was done. Yeah. Yes, and you'll never be able to fix it if something goes wrong. That's been the case. Uh, my buddies own Shift Fast Performance, and they do Subaru Performance, and they're really close to me. And every once in a while, they have to call me in on like diagnosing some ungodly weird freaking issue just to get another set of eyes and hands on it. And these highly modified super like the things i have seen done to these cars are like hacks on these cars and just like halfway patched together things it's just staggering some of the stuff you see like how did it even drive in here that way you know not saying this one's patched together but like a lot of these performance shops quote unquote like do some really sketchy crap and then other guys have to figure it out later you know what they did yeah because especially if you go from shop to shop you have to unravel the mystery you know you have to like well what did they do to get to get this to work yeah it's it's just it's a shit show a lot of times a lot of times where people pay for x amount of build i want this this and this and then like all right here you go five months later here's your big bill pay it go blow the car up go to another shop and you're like this is a factory block they didn't put shit in here they just took your money like i've seen that many times too. <laughs> like, yeah because factory- how are you gonna know how are you gonna know unless you crack the block yeah, right. It's, right. Here's a 2002. These are all wagons for some reason. Here's an O2 Impreza WRX Sport Wagon. 18 grand. 12 hours ago, Mesa, Arizona. 85,000 miles. That's definitely going to be on the engine. On the engine. Yeah, for sure on the engine. I originally built this car in 2016 with a super clean, rust free strip shell with 70,000 original miles. I decided I was going to take the build to the next level by deleting AC and ABS, <laughs> shaving the engine <laughs> next bay. Next level, delete the <laughs> AC. <laughs> That's going to take it to the next level. I'm taking it to the next level, baby. In Arizona. In Arizona, we delete the AC. <laughs> Rotating the intake manifold, rotated the turbo and sedan rear quarter oh, conversion. God. Sadly, after I started taking it apart to start the process i lost interest in the project won't take much to get it back running and looking like it used to it will come with every extra part that i have been hoarding Ah. over the years check photos for list of parts asking 18 grand firm i have many cash offers of 25 (laughs) to 30 thousand when the car was complete and running there is well over 40 thousand into it you won't find a cleaner wagon with this many rare and discontinued parts. Only trades I would consider is something right-hand drive like an R33 <laughs> Skyline, a Toyota Aristo, a Chaser, maybe an Evo, built C5 Corvette, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Oh my god. Get the this fuck guy out is of here. A, this guy is a fucking lunatic. <laughs> you should have took the 30 grand and ran years ago, idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, 18 gr- oh, oh look at those wow. taillights oh my <laughs> the god I'm like okay you've got brembos you got sti brembos and hubs and all that stuff and maybe an sti six speed in it but like what are you 18 grand oh oh yeah. your question earlier why are these all wagons yeah the reason is because all the sedans have already been ragged out and destroyed and all the wagons were <laughs> like unmodified for a lot longer so now people are like ah, i guess we'll just start doing wagons and yeah of course, that, that's, that's, what, that's the, what's left over exactly like the right. 240sx convertible yeah 240sx convertible oh that's what's left over so let's let's modify that yep <laughs> go back D- one picture d21s those are what's look left. this one this one even has the fucking pride month fucking shit Right there on the roof. But I remember back when 240s were like dirt cheap. I had an S13 I bought for $300 running and driving in like 2006 before Griptex. Man, you could have been Mr. Nissan. What happened? Yeah. What happened? I mean, it's there? crazy. It's crazy because, like, I used to follow Formula Drift. Like, I did motorsports photography for Formula Drift and a bunch of all these drift events and, like, oh, cool. these little small sanctioning bodies that would, like, license FD drivers and stuff. I did that for years before I did the YouTube thing, too. But, yeah, I I, I, tr- I got that, let's see, I got that 240 in trade for a Zex nitrous kit, a nitrous bottle, <laughs> and $200 or something stupid. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> I'll give you yeah, this 40 for your nitrous kit. That's like that dude who bought a pizza with Bitcoin like 10 years ago. <laughs> No, or the, uh, or the sir, guy that it, bought the guy that bought a used Corolla with Bitcoin. Yeah, <laughs> sir, it was two pi- it was two pizzas, sir, two oh, pizzas. Have oh, you yeah. seen that interview with the guy? He's about cr- yes, he's nearly crying. A thousand Bitcoin. It was two pizzas. What a chump <laughs> for six hundred eighty million dollars or something. <laughs> so what'd you end up doing with the two forty? I stripped it because I was going to make it a, a, a drift car. Because God damn duh. it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> then i blew up the ka24 in it because it already had a rod knock i just like put a brick on the throttle and sent it to the moon this was years ago in my more reckless stages but look and, see uh, look this is this 
listen, kids, this is what we this is what we used to do with them. This is how they were treated. That's why right. we're in. <laughs> that's why, why we're so in the situation we are today. Yeah. Well, they were cheap shit boxes. No one wanted. My buddy was literally demolition derbying uh, S chassis, and this was one of the ones I got from him. I got it from him. I bought and sold an S13 for $200 just because I wanted the dashboard out of it one time. <laughs> I can't imagine, well, it's probably worth about 5,000 bucks. We actually know exactly what S13 shells are worth at this point, but yeah. It, oh, I I even took the dash out of this one. I can't remember if it was cracked or if I cracked it, but like, <laughs> I took the dash, everything, door panels, carpet, everything. It was just a seat, a steering wheel, and the cluster zip tied to the crash bar, and I took it through the pasture just bombing ass till a blue engine up. <laughs> Well, R.I.P. to that car. Um, <laughs> I don't even remember what I did with the shell afterwards. Do you live in a society but belong in a society? Do you play bass guitar but wish you were blasting trumpets? Fear not, rude boy, for a benevolent god has created Collector Car Feed, bestowed onto you. At CollectorCarFeed.com, you can use our search tool to easily browse thousands of active vehicle listings for neoclassic cars and trucks. Find exactly the car you want and set your wallet on fire with the help of CollectorCarFeed.com. Thanks to Collector Car Feed, I got my very own 370Z without the hassle of using those other used car sites and apps. A blasting trumpets throwing that sh sideways and deaf as the ladies love it too, and I tell you about that, but this voiceover actor wouldn't say the line. This voiceover actor thinks your line was cheap and too on the nose. <coughs> Just like me and your mom on Friday night. CollectorCarFeed.com. Find the fucking car you fucking wanted instead of a bunch of fucking bullshit at CollectorCarFeed.com. Brittany Schleining asks, I just came in late. Who's the guest today? Well, this is Mr. Subaru, and let me make sure I got the number right. 1387 of YouTube and uh, allegedly TikTok fame. I don't, I don't use the TikTok, but uh, you, are you doing pretty good on TikTok? Oh, TikTok blew the doors off of Instagram and YouTube for me. I think I'm at like 330,000 followers on there now or something. Wow. Which accounts to diddly squat at the end of the day, but that's <laughs> there. <laughs> and you're just fucking up Matt Coe's life on TikTok, huh? Dude, I just get on TikTok to piss people off at this point. I just like <laughs> enrage everybody with all the videos. It's like, who am I going to piss off today? I'm going to piss off snap on fans or I'm going to piss off Harbor Freight fans. Like, that's the big piss and match there. I'll make an anti Harbor Freight video. And it's like, oh, he's a snap on fanboy. I'll make an anti snap on one. It's like, what the hell? Buy USA tools. I'm like, I can't p please you people. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from me? You're a snap on dealer? I was. I was for, let's see, from 2014 until 2017 and the mid-year and then i went back at the end of 17 through 18 left again then i went back late 18 into early 19 and then i was for like eight months and 21 like i've off and on love hate relationship with snapple <laughs> gotcha. do you have a brand that you would recommend to um just just the average person like is there a good shade tree mechanic brand that we should be looking for because at this point oh, yeah. everything's made in china I just, or at least owned by a conglomerate in China. Icon, Icon or Tecton. That's what I would say. Okay. Those are Taiwanese. Tecton is anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a Harbor Freight's Icon is Taiwan. Yeah. Some, some Tecton is Taiwan. Some is USA. Very, yeah. you know, a few of it, you know. Like I know Milwaukee's making US made hand tools now and, and that's appealing, but unfortunately Milwaukee's owned by some Hong Kong company. So they're not really an American company anymore. Yeah. They're owned by TTI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Horse, horse skin gamer says gamer wrench. Yeah, gamer wrench is good. Gamer wrench. <laughs> I got. I gotta. I'll be back in a second. Okay. Carry on amongst yourselves. <laughs> yeah, gear wrench is good. Who makes gear wrench? Gear wrench. It's Taiwanese. It's a terrible name. It just. It sounds what? like a fake. It sounds like a fake fucking company, dude. Gear wrench. They're like. They're kind of like the innovators of the ratcheting wrench. Really? Mm hmm. Well, I'll be damned. Harbor Apex Freight can't go wrong. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here, Ericsson Marino, with your bullshit. When they got rid of that 20% off coupon, it was over between me and Harbor Freight. Yeah, Harbor Freight's kind of fucking up. They're, they're, they're trying to go two up market. Yeah. You know, and it's like, damn it. I, I leave and y'all shit talk Harbor Freight without me? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> it just started. So It's yeah, like my like, favorite thing. Harbor Freight's trying to, they're, they're fucking up because they're trying to go two up market. It's like a Kia Stinger. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah, that makes Sorry, sense. guys, I had to go let my I had to let my girlfriend in her house that I accidentally locked her out of, and she's been standing in the rain for 30 minutes and was afraid to text me because she knew I was live tonight. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> no, no, we have 20,000 subscribers. You can do whatever you want, dude. <laughs> my big hatred of Harbor Freight has come from people saying that Harbor Freight owns Snap-on or Snap-on and Harbor Freight tools come from the same place. Like, that, that is the, one of, like, my biggest pet peeves is trying to re-educate people, so to say, on, well, on tool knowledge. 
What about what about the Daytona jacks? Aren't those coming from the same sources? I think that's they are. Yes, the yeah. Daytona floor jack is coming from the same manufacturer, but that's like the only the shared only product. one. Like, yeah, that's the only one. Snap on and Harbor Freight don't make the same jack stands, right? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> like like Snap on's catalog of tools is over sixty five thousand products, and you're gonna say because one jack is sourced from the same place that everything is rebranded at Harbor Freight Snap on? Like, no, that's not that's not even logical thinking to you know follow. Plus the yeah. fact that you know you can just go to the actual Snap on factories in the United States and actually see the tools being manufactured. Well, you can't just walk in there, but I've been to them. As a dealer, yeah. I've been around. You could to probably them. get a tour, you know. <laughs> eh, I don't know. Snap on kind of hates me, so <laughs> like <laughs> no, but corporate. Like- <laughs> yeah, like I, I think they do give like factory tours every once in a while to the public, but like on certain days and yada yada. But yeah, I mean, like I know where they're at. Like Elizabethton, Tennessee; Murphy, North Carolina; the City of Industry, California; Elkmont, Alabama. Like they're all over the United States where their manufacturing facilities are. Not everything is made in USA, but like. I think the last like percentage the CEO gave was that uh, over 80% of the 65,000 products are made in the USA by Snap-on or Snap-on owned company. Yeah, and that's and that's a good percentage. That's more than any other tool company around. Like other than like Right Tool or, you know, some of the very small mom and pop ones, but they don't have anywhere near the catalog or size that say Snap-on that, that does. Snap on so. does. Right. So it's not comparable on that. Like if you're if you're comparing the tool trucks, because you know the tool trucks are the big three, which would be Snap on then Matco, then Mac, then Snap on decimates them in percentage of American made, USA made products. Now, I mean, Harbor Freight does have its place. Yes, of course. Es- yeah, especially- in hell, dude. Uh, especially f- no but uh, like especially for like people like like me you know mr subaru works on a load of cars so i can i can see why you'd want to go with a more quality tool but if i'm going to use something one time i'm going to go right. get i'll go get the harbor freight spring compressors you know i'll go right i'll go get the harbor freight fucking vacuum pump to to okay, to okay. put a vacuum I, on my ac the weird specific shit that Harbor Freight sells. Yeah, okay. But like for hand yeah. tools and stuff, if I'm going to buy a house brand, it's I'm just going to go to Home Depot or Lowe's. It's just they're all the same price yeah, at this point. Yeah, I'll buy I'll buy Cobalt, I'll buy Stanley, yeah. I'll buy husky. some Husky bullshit. Husky, yeah. See, that's the thing that people just like misinterpret for me, I guess. They like get so pissed off like, "Oh, he hates all Harbor Freight and calls Harbor Freight trash and you're a poor peasant if you don't have Snap." And it's like, that's not it at all. I, most of my videos are oriented towards professional mechanics and I give advice as the form of to a professional mechanic that if like you're buying Harbor Freight or cheap stuff, like you're not doing yourself any justice in investing in yourself and your occupation. I look at it from that perspective. It's not that like Hey, if you're DIY Joe, like wrenching on your car once a month, you know, on a weekend, sure, that stuff is perfectly fine for you. You don't need to go spend the kind of money that a professional mechanic does on tools. That's not my message at all. But people tend to like twist it or get yeah, offended. Yeah, they and want they, form they an miscon- opinion. They, yeah, they want to twist it into something that they, that they can be mad about. Is what it is. Right. Yeah. Because right, like, yeah. Because like, let's let's be real. For me, a Harbor Freight brake caliper compressor is perfectly fine. Right. Like, you know, shit like that. For one or two uses. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to use it a lot, though, get a good one. Right. Like, oh. And then when it doesn't, you just go for it for the windshield and say, give me another. And they're like, all right, here you go. But that that's also the other thing is that the Harbor Freight is very, very liberal with their return policy. All right, anyway, here's uh, here's another WRX. We didn't look oh, at What were we talking about? Oh, yeah, Subarus. <laughs> Subarus, yeah, yeah. 2004 Subaru Impreza WRX Sport Wagon, 5500 bucks. 10 hours ago in Exix, Maryland. 04 WRX, great car, aftermarket scoop removed, but I still have it. STI Turbo, WRX rims, bigger injectors, fuel pump, stage one clutch, access port, stage one or two tune. Engine and trans has 160K on both. Clean car for what it is. Daily driver will trade for stock, infinity manual, or anything big or sporty. <laughs> fast <laughs> oh, and there's the there's the money shot right there yeah the car wash com- pick yeah when you get the diy car wash pick that <laughs> means no <laughs> it's gonna personally be, it's i gonna like be that for me dog i personally like the eight holes in the trunk lid or in the deck lid back there and the figures on the yeah. second picture oh yeah how many different wings and spoilers can we drill and put into this car <laughs> it was all it was oh, no, different it's fucking yeah, it was different antennas, man. Oh, yeah. He's got- S-band, L-band antennas. There's the wing on the grass. <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed that in that picture. <laughs> Gotta have the chicken wire in the uh, aftermarket STI scoop, too. Yeah. Very oh, important. My- let Cracked me, windshield. So let me tell you, I had I had a bug eye WRX. Very, very clean, very, very cool. 
I had the, the JDM version 7 SCI scoop on it, the lip kit front and rear, the OEM lip kit, you know, the, mm. the, the three piece, very nice car. Right. And when I sold it, the motherfucker bought an eBay GD blob eye scoop like that and put it on. No, unpainted. Oh my God. And I wanted <laughs> to fucking vomit. Am I blind or does it look like it's got an aftermarket sunroof in that picture? Oh, or is that just died. a line from the reflection? It, that might be a it reflection. It looks a weird shape. I don't think so. I think it's a reflection. I think it's a reflection. I have seen someone put a sunroof in one. Ugh. Yeah. After, aftermarket <laughs> sunroofs never turn out right. They always stick up weird. And, and we see a lot. It's like, where do you buy a waterbed today? You know, like, where are you getting these aftermarket fucking sunroofs and who's putting them in? Right. Yeah. right. Who's, agree- who's agreeing to this? They haven't done that shit since like the 1980s. Like it's such a weird thing to see on a modern car. That's a trend I hate in new cars. That like every car has a sunroof. I despise a sunroof. I don't want a place that's gonna leak and I'm never gonna open. Like I don't want a sunroof. I'm a big fan. And I love like them. it's it's one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, cool, it has a sunroof, but do I ever use it? I've never opened the fucking sunroof on wife's out back. Like maybe four times. You're not living, right. dude. You hate convertibles. You hate sunroofs. I, just... I open the sunroof in on my S13. I I, I do that. You pop it up. That no, thing it, it, comes it only off, goes right? back. It, no, it only goes back. It doesn't oh, pop up. On the, the... the Baja pops up. The Baja will pop yeah. up or go back. Yeah, my bad. I keep forgetting that you have a coupe. Moonroof versus sunroof or whatever. The yeah. difference is one, one drops and slides and one like angles no, well, and slides. Uh, the the moonroof is glass and the sunroof is metal. Oh, really? uh, okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if there's actually a discernible difference. I think. I think it's just marketing terminology. I think that is, you know, roof panel lore. Fight is, him in the comments. Is yeah, moon moon roof is glass, so you can see through it, and the sun roof is is a solid, you know, metal piece. I thought it was based on their action, where they popped up and slid back, or where they dropped into the roof and slid back under the roof skin. I think it just depends on who's selling the car. Honestly, I don't. I don't, I don't think there's Probably. actually a difference, <laughs> but. Kind of, kind of like speed control versus uh, cruise control back in yeah. the 80s when they first introduced it. And Chrysler had it as speed control. And I think Ford GM had it as cruise control. And then now everyone just calls it cruise control. It just won out like Band-Aid or Q-tip. You yeah, know? Ex- yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like Posi-Track. Yeah, like, 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 like Posi-Track. Yeah, exactly. Right. All right. Well, this one is a no. Just fucking. There's a lot How of more signs here. It was, um, sorry, it's uh, 5,500 bucks. 212,000 oh, miles. The, the the fact that he doesn't even have the mount for the uh, access port, he just has it like just looped up there on yeah. the between the yeah between the cluster and the uh, yeah that's everything you, everything you need to know. You're gonna have a right. bad time. And like you mentioned, the the cracked windshield, like it's a simple thing to fix. Like if you're not doing this, what else aren't you doing? Also, out of gas. Look at the gas gauge. <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. Look at the fucking <laughs> gas gauge. The the Subaru gas gauges aren't forgiving, you know. <laughs> Cruising the left lane, not passing nobody, taking a picture with my cell phone, not one but two <laughs> on the access port sideways. Yeah. My crack with you. Even less gas here. Oh, and um here's one. Here's one we like to point out. License plate in the windshield. If you're yeah. not gonna run a front plate, just don't run a front plate. This is just telling cops to pull you over because you don't have a front plate. It draws the eye. Front. Yeah. Like if this wasn't here, maybe you're from out of state. Maybe you just don't have a front plate. You put it up in the windshield, now you're getting pulled over. It's a dumb and he's wearing camo yeah. shorts and camo shirt. Nah, that's just his buddy, If that's dude. him. <laughs> they're just in a car meet. <laughs> that's a guy walking by admiring it. Yeah. <laughs> We're having a car meet it's out not- here in, in six well, inches of grass, ten inches of grass. <laughs> These are the kind of people that admire it right here. That's not, the, that's not what you want to attract. All right. We're in a Oof. we're in a storage container or storage facility. We have a 2004 been there Impreza. Long. <laughs> we have a 2004 Impreza WRX 1500 bucks 8 hours ago Sarasota Florida. 160,000 miles, no engine, no bulkhead harness. Transmission Ooh. works but second gear has problems, but only sometimes. Of course. Everything is there, <laughs> just dropping an engine and harness. No big deal. All right. And transmission. This is looking really and nice. Dead. Dent and then sunburn and then steering the, wheel on the, the roof, tent. Quart- quarter pound rust. Yeah, that's yeah. steering wheel on the yep. Oh, sunburn. Yes. Got quick release uh, OEM steering wheel on the roof there, and he has a quick he has release the sub- hub there in the back too. He has that subframe on the on the just there on the wall. Yeah, over here. Yeah, that's like goes under the engine. It's like I think it added they added that for North American cars, and people are like, oh, you don't need it, you can take it off. What mm. I think I think they added it at the blah eye because I don't think Bug Eyes had them. No, no, no. It was it was Hawkeye. Oh six, oh seven. I think. No, my Bug Eye had it for sure. Huh. I don't think mine did. So maybe mine was removed. <laughs> so yeah, somebody took it off. Oh, you don't need this. It's it's you need a lighter for racing. Take you take it, it off yeah. just for weight savings, and it weighs like five pounds. <laughs> it's it's, so it's like a it's like a subframe 
Subframe brace or some body shit. body brace, yeah. yeah. It, like, goes between the two. So, so fuck rigidity, we want to save five pounds. Yes. Oh, you know what? I want an aficionado's opinion on this. Bug eye, blob eye, or hawk eye? An excellent Rank question. Them. Rank them. Rank them. Ooh. So, blob eye still has a big part because it was the first WRX I had was a blob eye. Of the blob eyes, it had to be the 05 that had the upgraded interior compared to the 04 that just had the bug eye interior. Then I would have to go bug eye and hawk eye would come in last of the three. Mm-hmm. I'm... Com- I'm... <sighs> Wait, well, how do I do it? Do I bug? I think I go Hawkeye. Bug I don't eye, know. It's your your opinion, dude. I, I <laughs> tell me I, my I, opinion. I don't well, know how to form it. <laughs> I think I might go Bug Eye first. I go bug eye for first. the same I reason like because I had a Bug Eye first, and right. and I think it's the most endearing to me. The Blob Eye didn't age as gracefully as the Bug Eye or the or the Hawkeye. Because the blob eye was them trying to make it a normie car <laughs> after they were so uh, repulsed by the bug eye. <laughs> but but that's what makes the bug eye cute now is like, oh, look right. how quirky it is. And, and yeah. it's so different. It's an eccentric looking car. It, it's a good Dodge Neon. <laughs> it, it's it's funny looking at the progression of the GD chassis because it's like, all right, let's make the bug eye. And then off North America was like, what the hell is these round headlights? What is this front end? <laughs> They're like, all right, all right, make it a little more normal. The blob eye comes out. And it's like, OK. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing, but a little blah. It's like, ah, oh, screw it. Hawkeye. Three ba- <laughs> three girls in the front, and oh, oh, there's the cancer. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Rotten shell with a yeah. cut bulkhead uh, harness and a second gear synchro gone out. How much only, does he want? Only sometimes, though. Oh, my <laughs> God. Look at that. Oh, wow. Where is that? that the is... bottom of the trunk lid? Is that the bottom of the door? No. Door? Uh-huh. I think it's a door. Yeah. That's a door panel on the backside, right? There's a little Christmas trees and the plastic and the foam. Yeah, that's the door panel. Yeah. Jeepus. I've never seen a door rod out. I've seen the I've seen the quarter panels, but again, I don't live in the Rust Belt, so I don't see much of it at all. This is in Florida. I mean, oh, I, I guess geez. there is a lot of rust in Florida, though, because, you know, ocean. Get out of here, Dangles. Now your cat bugging you. <laughs> Idiot cat. Anyway, this is this is ruined. And it's a shell and, and it, I mean, this transmission's fucked up, too. I mean, there's nothing really of value here, is there? Like, if it wasn't a rotten shell for 15, that's not bad, but, like, to have that much cancer the in thing it, is then it's, no. it's It's not even the good seats, you know? The yeah, door that's panels, not even the seats that came in it. Yeah, the door panels, I guess, are desirable, but, yeah, I'm not gonna pay 1500 fucking bucks for door panels. No. Oh, it has that RS, Evo wheels? It's RS wheels. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's 2.5 RS Those wheels. Those are best friends right there. Yeah, yeah, that could just cause oh, a God. piece of fucking shit. $25,000. Oh. Which, oh, 87,000 miles. For a Hawkeye STI, 25 is is actually reasonable. Yeah, if it's not modified other than if those headlights. If it's not headlights. modified, I w- yeah, I wouldn't pay 25 for a modded one. No, it is modified. Look at the front mount. And it, yeah, it has a front mount. It has an intake. Koyo. Genuine Koyo. Uh, yeah, He's got I'll, the wrong I'll, radiator cap. I'll forgive oh, no, that right. Koyo. No, that's, I think that's the uh, overflow tank or, or an air oil separator. I don't know what the fuck that is. No, no, no. I was I was seeing the round radiator cap, and I was like, oh, the round one. No, the round one's supposed to be on the radiator. Oh, the yeah, the on the front. Wings is yeah, supposed to be on the, the, on, the on the overflow tank. The, the metal yeah, that tank. Yeah, be a dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was correct. Good old Subaru. Everything you need to know is all in bright yellow. All your fluids. <laughs> like pee. <laughs> yeah. 